Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to How to Win at Chess. This is episode 19, and this is a series where I play against my subscribers. I go up the rating ladder, and through the 10-minute games that we play, I walk you through the opening, the middle game, and the end game. Uh, this is a unique episode. There's a lot of strong players, 12 to 1800, uh, but it's unique mostly because I play a bunch of openings I don't normally play. So you get to see a bunch of stuff that's kind of interesting, and we experience a lot of new and fresh positions. Uh, and we have a holiday sale. All my courses are 40% off. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, there's a link in the description to my website and, um, that's about it. Oh, one last thing. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN or a virtual private network, which allows you to encrypt your connection to the internet so you can browse it privately and anonymously. You want to stream a show like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is unavailable in your country? Use Surfshark VPN. You want to check some secure information like banking or an email while traveling? Use Surfshark VPN. Oh, and my favorite, you want to save some money when you're buying airplane tickets because those damn airlines are charging you whatever they want? Select a different country on Surfshark VPN and you can save some serious money. Surfshark also offers certain benefits that other VPNs can't promise you. So first of all, there's Bypasser, which is really useful. You can allow certain apps to not connect using the VPN. Why is this important? Let's say you use a banking app or Coinbase, and if it reads you in another country, it could completely lock you out of your account. And then there is the gem, in my opinion, of all the Surfshark benefits, unlimited devices. I've never seen something like this. You can connect on your phone, on your computer, you can connect on your parents' computer, you can connect on your grandparents' computer, your dog's computer, your cat's computer, and even your toaster. So if you're interested in Surfshark, you can try it and get up to 83% off and three free months. That comes out to about $2 every single month. The link is in the description. You know what to do. Go click it, and if you hate it, Surfshark offers you 30 days money back guarantee. Why are you still watching? Go click the link. Let's get back to the video. All right, it's time to get started. We've got the black pieces versus Jake PC1, who has a profile. Oh, all right, turns out I'm in Wood League. Uh, that's that's kind of terrifying. That person has a terrifying profile photo. So E4. Uh, for this, for this actually, actually for today's recording, I'm not going to be. Um, oh, I have to adjust a couple things here a little bit overlay there we go uh, i'm not going to be playing so much of the repertoire that i recommend in my uh in my courses uh, i'm actually going to just be playing chess so that it, i mean i i have the guy they're, they're both but uh so against bishop c4 we're going to be going knight f6 i doubt my opponent plays knight g5 oh interesting okay so uh, opponent plays d4 right away so obviously here uh we're taking we're not too afraid uh, e5 is just d5, so that's kind of the rule of thumb. I mean, this is very scary if you don't know what you're doing to have this kind of bum rush at you. So if you're going to go for e4, you got to know that here um, white is trying to seize the initiative right away by clearing the e-file forward. Now, if you play knight g4, you can just basically lose on the spot. There's bishop takes f7 check already. Some tactics near the weak square. King f7 and knight g5. So you're, you're, you're just going to run into like borderline, you know, game-winning problems. Uh, game losing problem. So e5, you you know you ha you have to go with d5. Uh, very principled. The thing is, if if you don't know this, like you will get smashed. So uh, now opponent plays uh, bishop to b5, and of course we have to move our knight. And now going to the center is actually completely fine. It should be. Knight takes d4, uh, pressuring this. We will just go bishop d7, breaking the pin. So this is sort of the uh, the idea here, and uh, we are okay. Although admittedly, I, I I don't know a whole lot about this. I'm actually. I'm almost winging playing like this. Now, I'm going to take with the pawn because I want to preserve the bishop pair. Uh, I want to keep my bishop here on the board. We've compromised the structure mildly. My knight is a bit weird, but it can always wrap back around. And my plan right now is either bishop c5 or bishop e7 and short castle. I have no other plans. I do not want to attack in the center yet. I want to castle first, and then I want to play. Um, yeah, again, bishop e7 or bishop c5. I, I honestly don't know the difference between the two. Uh, bishop c5 doesn't really threaten anything, and if anything, takes away my reroute, so my, my knight c5, knight e6 idea. Uh, my opponent could play f3, kicking my knight out of the middle, or f4. Actually, f4, f5 is a little bit unpleasant, I must say. Uh, it looks a little bit unpleasant. There's also f6, but like I said, f6 right now is insane, because this is coming. Uh, so... And, and then and then there is c5, which is the most forcing option that I have, but I have to deal with the fact that when this knight moves, the queen attacks my pawn. 
So the position kind of changes a little bit. But if the knight goes to f3, then there is no f-pawn push. There is no f-pawn expansion, right? So there, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of ways we can play this. I'm going to go bishop e7 uh, just to see if my opponent does, in fact, play for f4, f5. Uh, and uh, we, that's, that's what we're, we're going to do. I think, I think it's the most principled. The, the next thing to do is maybe to trade my knight. Something like knight d2. Because my, my knight is strong. It's a strong piece. So, again, when, when I play these games, the goal is not always to make some crazy, uh, you know, some crazy super accurate play. I, I honestly would rather play a bit closer to 1296 strength at the level of my opponent to kind of simulate a legitimate game. So now knight c5. Knight g5, probably also okay. Probably also okay. I mean, this trade is not so scary. It's very hard to play f3 kicking the knight out and then play f4. That, like, not a lot of people would do that. Um, it's just not very, yeah. It, it, it could be a thing. You're like, well, I just pushed it. I'll push it again, right? So there's knight c3. Um, yeah, I want to castle. I think castling is probably good. Now if f4, this bishop gets blocked in, this, this dark squared bishop. So I could have gone knight e6 right away. But the thing about knight e6 right away is that maybe this knight wraps around to f5. Right, so bishop e3. So, of course, I mean, rook b8 is just always a consideration. Because it's such a natural move, right? Uh, now, I, I, I am starting to think about the move f6. I feel like this exchange could do me some favors. The only reason I wouldn't play it is that after I take back with the bishop, the bishop hits my knight. So, for example, f6, oops, f6, takes, takes, knight takes c6, bishop takes, there is bishop takes knight. So... Seeing this through everything is tricky, because right now I'm here. But if f6 takes and rook takes, yeah. I mean, knight e6, knight f5, like I said, is a slight inconvenience. It's sort of dissuading me from this whole operation. Makes me kind of want to not play it. Uh, g6. Also, I have rook e8, and then the bishop can come back. It's another idea, so knight e6 and then drop my bishop back. But I'm so cramped in so many of these positions that I, I don't know. I don't know. Knight e6, knight f5, and then trading off the dark squared bishop is also possible, but I, again, my bishop is so bad. Rerouting to a6, I suppose, is a possibility. But f6 is just so simple, so clean. I might play rook b8 first, just because I think that rook b8, b3 actually benefits me, if it benefits anybody. Um, and you know what I just realized when, when B3 happens, this knight loses stability. That's actually very interesting. So B3, this is no longer stable, which means that I can put my bishop on F6 and C3 is weak. So there you go. There you go. We're trying to figure everything out about this position. Knight to B3. That is actually a very decent move. This might hang. Knight b3 is a great move. Wow. And if knight e6, I guess my opponent is just going to take on a7. Wow. Very nice. So if I take, take... How do I guard this? Knight b3 is a fantastic move. I totally missed knight b3. I was playing a little bit of hope chess there. If I take and play c5, I hang d5. If I play knight e6 and then bishop a7, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I think uh, I have to. I think I'm, I'm just going to have to lose this pawn. And what we're going to try to rely on here is the fact that we have a lot of active lines. Uh, so we have like the b and a file open. We have c5, d4 possibilities. Um, and we can probably break uh, with the f-pawn. So we'll play like uh, f6, etc. And we'll just get a nice and you know, good, good position. Um, even at the cost of the a pawn, because if we overrun our opponent in the center of the board, I think we'll be we'll be good even with the pawn deficit. Or the opponent is not interested in taking the pawn on a seven, which okay, that's a bit surprising. Although f six f five, yeah, wow, and it's not easy for me to to move. And if I play f5, then this becomes a lot stronger. But I think I'm going to go for it. I, th I, th I think I have to play f5. Uh, en passant, obviously, bishop takes. Now, bishop a7. I'm not going to get as much play in the center as I wanted. 
but I'm still gonna get rook to b4 with pressure here, and then I can reroute this bishop to a6, or this way, but obviously the queen is there. So we're down a pawn, but it's kind of a meaningless one, unless opponent has the a pawn rolling themselves, and that's about it. That's about the entire evaluation of this position. Knight to e2. Okay. I get that move. Uh, I still kind of want to play rook b4. Bishop e8. So obviously the idea is to put a knight on d4. That is the idea. Um, like, this is very interesting. I, what, I, what I'm thinking about is to, to strike with c5. So for example... I don't exactly know what my best move is right now. I mean, I, I could play something kind of ugly like a6. I might just play a6. Um, and, uh, you know, he'll play knight to d4 or something. And uh, take, knight takes, c5. Knight g3. Not, what? What does that do? Why are we going over there? I guess queen d3 is about uh, queen d3. I, visually, g, g6 looks very normal here. It just looks good, like a good solid move. I can't play c5 yet. I really want to, but I can't. So I think I'm going to play this for now. And I, again, I, my whole position will become much better if I can succeed in playing the move uh, c5. And if I can play c5, then this no longer has a guard. Uh, no, no longer has a problem. But I can't because my, my queen is there. So it's a mildly unpleasant position, to say the least. But such is life. Opponent's been thinking for some time. Okay, there's knight d4. So if I take, I'm fine, but I don't have to take. Um... Let's go, uh, let's go c5. c5 is a nice move, because now I can achieve what I want. The pawn has been unpressured. That's not a word, but... What? What? And... Huh? What is this? Is this... Uh... Why did... What? <laughs> what? what? I, I mean, I'll, t I'll take it, you know? Uh, that was a really good game by my opponent for a very long time. I, I don't know why they decided to lose a piece, but... Um... Okay, you know, we'll, we'll take it. So it's still, it's still a little tricky, honestly. So I, I have to, like, get out of two pins here. I'm going to go queen e8 uh, and, uh, and then king h8. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide both pieces out of the way. I mean, rook d1 is probably coming. My, my pawn structure kind of sucks. My pawn structure kind of sucks. Like, I, I, I don't have any pawn mobility at all. So I'm going to try to, like, unwind here. And, and now, now with a material advantage and also preventing the, you know, kind of infiltration of the knight over there, uh, I, I will be fine, probably. Um, but, uh, again, it's not, not, not the prettiest position to play. And now we are planning out what clips to put on the clips channel. So, queen d3. I think bishop b5 here should be, but... The problem with bishop b5 is that queen b3, and then this is hit. That's unfortunate. Now this is hanging. Bishop here, queen here, queen f7. That should be okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. Otherwise, my opponent is just simply going to lose material. In the meantime, I will uh, upload um, the video 
it, I'm uploading a YouTube video as I'm recording a YouTube video. Isn't that nuts? Talk about dedication. I don't know if that's like the, the best way to describe it, but uh, it's not really dedication. It's career and what earns my, 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 my income. But, you know, it's still like uh, Inception over here. And what I like to do is I like to schedule the video on my phone. So this is a little bit of YouTube insider knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise, but on the desktop, you cannot actually schedule YouTube videos unless it's by the 15th minute of the hour, 15, 30, 45, and the top of the hour. On the phone, you can schedule it at any time. Did you know that? You probably didn't, and now you do, and now you are a more complete individual. You're welcome. Is it my move? It is my move. Why did my opponent give me the rook? I will take it, but I don't understand. Yeah, my opponent played very well, and then just played like a total lunatic. And I suppose that's why 1296 is a, is a, oh my, oh my god, he hung the, what? My opponent should have taken with the rook. Oh my gosh, just blundered everything. Okay, king to e2. Now I just move back. Come back here with my rook. Let's go rook back to d8, and... We will deliver a mate. Um, queen b5, knight d4. The, the, the big thing when you're up two rooks is, uh, okay, don't run out on time. And uh, also don't stalemate, but this is not one of those situations. And just take a look at how, okay, counterplay can be created. I'm going to trade queens. Um, here we go. And uh, resigns. Okay. We'll quickly analyze. Uh, I feel like uh, the opening was actually quite good by white. Like, I thought f3 was a good move. Uh, knight c3 is kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah, the computer likes f4. Actually, it, it very much likes f4. Um, curious what I should have done. To okay, so rather than bishop e7, I should have been more active with bishop c5, which is makes sense. Uh, bishop e3 is a very reasonable move. Yeah, knight b3 I completely missed. Uh, the strength of this move, I mean, I just completely underestimated. So, so the machine uh, doesn't even like bishop a7. It doesn't like bishop a7. It actually prefers this, which is crazy. And then knight e2... Knight e2 is a crazy high-level move. And then from here it was... I mean, knight e2 was played with the intention of going here, and the opponent just chose the completely wrong plan. And then proceeded to just make a lot of blunders and, you know, it's life. But honestly, that's, that's, you know, they played very well for a decent period of time. Um, and uh, let's go. Let's, uh, let's go for the next game. And again, in, in this video, I'm going to play just, you know, I'm going to play solid openings and try to put pressure on opponents. So let's play E4. Uh, this is a Gotham sub, so very high chance of Caro or D5. But, uh... Okay. Knight F6! Oh my god. Okay, that is quite a move. So, this is the Alyokin's defense. Um, the most principled way to play it is to play uh, E5. Um, and then you can, you can play, like, four pawn attack style. I'm just gonna kind of play normal and solid. Uh, which is just d4 and, and knight f3. So th this is like the main line. I mean, I, I normally don't uh, don't play like ultra main lines in these in, in, in these recordings, but to be honest with you, I already don't even know exactly what to play against this. I just normally don't get it. I might play uh, bishop c4 and like bring the bishop back because uh, I'm going to be under a little bit of pressure in the center here. I can also, I guess, play c4. That's another thing. I'm going to go here. And I'm also going to announce my video as I'm recording. Crazy. All in one package. So yeah, knight b6, bishop b3, bishop g7, castles, castles, and maybe I'll play h3. h3 will prevent bishop g4, which is just going to apply some more pressure to my center. Or I'll play rook e1. Rook e1 is also a very reasonable move. Uh, and uh, I just drew a lot of arrows. But this is kind of like, you know, you need to take a center-based approach. In general, c6 is a fine move. I could take and damage the structure, but and kind of try to play against the double pawns. But let's just be principled. There's absolutely no need to commit to anything. 
in many ways, this pawn uh, blocks the natural development path of the knight. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go rookie one. We're gonna be very principled here. We're gonna solidify the center rather than trying to like crack it open. I could go c3. C3 is also trying to hold the center very nicely. H3 is also a possibility. So again, I wanna I wanna play against the natural development of my opponent. H3 is just an annoying move. Uh, if the opponent plays bishop to f5. Then just g4. Let's go bishop b3. Haven't said anything because no moves have been made. When you watch these episodes, it's very chill. So if you sometimes don't hear me talk, don't worry. It's like ASMR. Uh, yeah, anyway, we've been preventing this. So it's a, it's, we're going to have a very uh, interesting battle here. I mean, this is like very unique territory for... Uh, for uh, win at chess, like I'm not playing any any of the course content, and I mean we're basically just uh, just trying to play principal chess, like in the center of the board. If here, probably knight takes. Oh, d5. Okay. So that is a massive commitment. So now that the center is completely closed. Uh, we are going to completely shift our focus over there. So what I mean by that is we're going to play c3. This might not be the best move. Uh, we can also play bishop f4, bishop g5, but the pawn breaks in this position are now severely limited. Black is really only playing for f6. And if this bishop is not able to develop to either square, which right now it's really not. I mean, if it goes here, I can just kick it out, but it should probably go to f5. Uh, we, we are trying to reroute, uh, and maybe while solidifying the center, go trade off the dark squared bishop on h6. So what I'm thinking right now is to play bishop f4. I'm going to wait for bishop c2, I don't, and I'm also going to wait for g4. Uh, once black kind of plays in their mind what they're thinking is, is just developing moves, like the knights and the bishops, oh, my knights and bishops all got a turn, that's fine. But the structure here is much better for white because we have a dominant space advantage. Like rook e8 doesn't make much sense because f6 is the move you're trying to play to not die. And right now you are, you are failing to accomplish that. Like you're, you're not going to play f6 with a rook on e8. That's just because the pawn is not supported. I'm thinking about g4 here to kind of illustrate my point. It's a bit of a, it's a bit overextending and opponent might not want to even be restricted. They might go here and just try to trade. But the thing is, this is going to get caught in the cookie jar, because I'm just going to... I can even move my knight out of the way, but, you know, that, that trade does not improve black's position. In fact, it just removes a piece off the board. Uh, it, might, it very well might be better for black to play bishop d7 or bishop c8 here, but just from the space advantage standpoint and the fact that the knight on b6, despite being okay and safe, doesn't actually play an active role in this game at all. Neither does the knight on b8. The bishop on g7 literally got a massive condo built outside of its apartment. It can't see sunlight anymore. So, you know... Right? This is a... <laughs> this is a... We're, we're, we're suppressing the play here, is what we're doing. Um, so bishop b4. Uh, I'm gonna go knight d2, hitting this. And again, f6, not as potent, because we're solidifying that very nicely. And now we are just threatening to not just win a pawn, we're threatening to also bust open this diagonal. So now the question is, knight f3 or queen f3? I think this, I, sh I should make progress, and queen d2, bishop h6, still very much on the cards. And in general, when you have a massive space advantage, and your pieces all kind of point in a direction, you can then use your same kingside pawns to go attack. So normally same side king side attacks are not possible, but when you have two bishops, a knight, maybe a queen, and maybe even a rook in a couple of moves, you know, king up and rook over, you have five pieces attacking, black has a bishop. And the, the space disadvantage here is huge, right? Like e6, I mean, black is not doing anything to help the situation. So I'm thinking about bishop c2 because, I mean, I'm never gonna break through this side, right? So let's go bishop c2. My moves kind of play themselves. I don't need to do anything crazy. Um, knight c4 is met with a b3. I mean, just kick out the knight or rook b1, right? Uh, king g2, h4, h5, right? Like, this is a good move. Okay, now I do need to think about c5, for sure. Um, I don't think it's so scary. 
like... I, so I'm thinking King G2. I'm also thinking H4, H5. I don't really want to play H4, H5 without having played King G2 and Rook H1. At the same time, I want to keep my Rook here in case F6 gets played. And at the same time, I'm almost thinking this and then H4, H5. I don't know. We have a lot of different attacking possibilities here. This is definitely something to consider for my opponent. But yeah, I, I mean, I think we just go for it. I think, I think it's very clear what our intentions are with H4. And not to mention when you sometimes just go for it. Yeah, okay, but this is a very good move. Very, very smart by my opponent. I don't have to take. I shouldn't take. Absolutely should not take. Uh, it's actually totally safe here to, to, to march forward. And just like Alpha Zero, if I have to play H6 to completely kill my opponent's oxygen supply and then G5, that might actually be okay. Do I want to? Probably not. I think it's much more in my favor to attack on the H file. I also have to be careful that the opponent can turn the open file against me. So don't just think they're going to take with the F-pawn. I mean, with the H-pawn, they actually could take with the F-pawn and then go back to the F-file and, you know, life goes on. Um, here, CDCD is not so scary because the knight can't actually activate. This move was always going to happen whether or not C5 occurred. And I'm pretty sure we can just play B3. And the question is, what the hell is that knight doing? Because if it goes to B2, we kill it. If it goes to A3, it's going to die on the edge of the board anyway. We will not be trading our bishop. And if it goes back, well, congrats, right? Like, you achieve nothing. So, um, and then king g2, rook h1. So the, the, the attack will continue. I mean, we're just, right? We're, we're just kind of playing the same side attacking chess. And king g2, rook h1, hg is all there. Uh, I'm looking to see if I have anything faster. Like, for example, knight g5, knight here. But I think I'm just going to play king g2. I think I'm going to show you the power of everything I'm saying verbally put it into practice. Because this is, this is like vintage, uh, you know, vintage attacking stuff here. Um, right, so. And there you go. So bishop d3. Interesting, rook h1. I mean, again, we're not in any danger, so they could sag, but okay, then we're just winning, right? So here comes rook h1, and everything is in place. And you know what the nice thing about this is? Um, we can build up before we take. Whereas if my opponent plays rook f8, thinking, oh, he's going to take, I have to... That's so funny that I called that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what I was going to say is now the bishop can't go this way. You see, the reason I wasn't playing h6 is that the bishop could come around. But now I could, if I wanted, kill the bishop forever. I can play h6 and g5, and the bishop dies. But then we have to play more positionally. We're not just getting boom, 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 knockout, right? Uh, do I want that? Um, no, I think I prefer, like, checkmate. I, I think I want to play for a checkmate in this game. Just, just to play for a checkmate, you know? Why not? Uh, so I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking queen d3 and rook c1 if I ever need backup. Although queen d3 is actually an inaccuracy. I've just made a mistake. Because now queen c7 and queen c3 will offer a queen trade. And I mean, I, I, of course I'm winning because, again, I can always play h6. I can always play against the bishop and that kills off. That, that's a backup plan to my attack. Uh, but it is annoying and I don't really want to trade queens. <laughs> But, uh, right. There you go. My friends are blowing up the group chat. You ever, like, have a group chat with your friends and uh, you miss a bunch of messages and now you got to play catch up? And if you're like, no, actually, Gotham, I don't have a group chat because it's hard for me to make friends, that's okay. Life is very long and sometimes even at the loneliest points of it, when you're too much in your own head, uh, just, just remember that, you know, you were born in the place of potentially somebody else. And sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time for everything in life to come together. Don't stress. Uh, I really don't want Queen C3 to happen. That would be a very high level move. But... At that point, I might even just be so stubborn I won't trade queens. It's a very instructive, right? Queen c3. Not queen c2, but queen c3 trying to trade queens. 
Uh, again, I, I, but beyond that, I mean, this, this game has been a perfect example of how to transform a locked structure with a space advantage uh, into an attack. And I hope I hope it serves y'all well. You know, I hope I hope you're learning. Yeah, Knight B8 is is no good. Um, we we now can probably start chopping everything down. I do still have to be a little careful, which is annoying. Um, I have a fascinating idea here. I can play HG here and Rook takes H7. I don't know if it's winning. King H7, Queen G6, King G8, Queen H7, King F7. Bishop g6 at least wins a queen. So I have uh, take, take, rook h7. There might be rook f4. And then queen g6. And then maybe king f8. That looks crazy. I, 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 I really shouldn't be risking it. There's absolutely no reason to do what I'm trying to do here. I mean, even knight g5 is just simple and strong and probably just wins. Uh, hg rook h7 would have been very nice if it worked. I, I was a bit suspicious as to whether or not um, as to whether or not it'd be okay. I will analyze after, but it's just it's just always going to be a decent move. The th the thing is, sometimes when the knight gets involved, the h pawn can move. So right now, the h pawn isn't moving because hg. But sometimes when the knight gets involved, now suddenly h6 is possible. But my plan there was honestly to probably still take on g6. <laughs> um, and most likely it's just winning. I don't know how. We'll still have to figure that out. But okay, bishop g6, now I have this. And now, now my rook hits the bishop and the attack crashes through and we win. I can maybe even play g7. Oh, g7 is not nice. That is not nice at all. Queen here is mate. Rook is threatened. Bishop is hanging. The biggest threat is, of course, queen h7 mate. And the reason I didn't take with check is because it's also good because I take here, but rook takes and no mate. So g7 is not a very nice move. Um, but it's, it's still good. g7 is, is, is good. GG, that was, a, that was smooth sailing, honestly. And, and, and the big mistake there for Black came not understanding uh, the opening structure. So I think that was the biggest problem. Uh, C6, I think, is a big inaccuracy. But in general, I mean, the Ljochen's defense is tough to play. Because if White plays principal chess like we did, just, you know, taking the center with two pawns and developing the pieces, um, I mean, it's tough. And def So it's, it's, it's already bad here, but, I mean, from this point forward, it's, it's like plus 1.5. So just so you understand, like, and rookie eight is now probably close to plus two. Um, and uh, I'm just mainly curious to see, like, uh, yeah, queen c3 here is the best move. Could I have played hg and rook h7? Yeah, I could have. I could have done take, take, rook h7. So I calculated this as just leading to a mate. Uh, and rook f4, queen g6, king f8. Okay, just here. Yeah, so. Queen c2 doesn't work because this, very nice. I could have played rook h1 and just sacked my rook and chop, 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 maybe knight g5. Oh, no, then check. So I could have gone for this, but I decided not to do it. But that was, a, that was good. That was honestly, that was a nice game. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's prepare the next one. There we go. All right, playing a Polish player, Pirzak. I hope that's not like a bad word. Got a digital sun, evil sunflower as a profile photo. It's very scary. Uh, we already had e4, so I'm going to play Karl Khan. That's the plan. d5. e5. Okay. Uh, Bishop f5 is, of course, good, but um, listen, I mean, I've got a Karl Khan course, and uh, it's not even about promoting my own courses. I, I honestly just think that this is such a good line for black. It's so easy to play, and nobody with white plays the most challenging way. Uh, C3 is already not even that good, because, yeah, so what we're going to do is, I mean, you can play bishop g4, but the easiest way to play this is the difference between this central block and the one from the last game is that here we have equal center control, and we're already kind of creating practical problems. You know, we, we have, we, we, black fights back for the center, whereas in the last game, the pawn wedge that we had in the center with the same pawns, e5, d4, black was not equipped to actually counterattack us in the center of the board. 
Uh, so bishop b5 is probably a normal move. I think you can play queen a5 and something like this, but I'm just going to play e6 and, and, and knight e7. So in all, all, all sort of endgames, this pawn will become a liability because it has no pawns defending it, and our position is quite strong. Like, we can pretty easily get to it. And what I mean by that is moves like queen b6, knight e7, etc. Okay, so probably here taking is, is the best move. Um, that's, that's usually my rule of thumb. It's, it's completely fine. Uh, we cannot play knight d4, but we can play queen a5. But then, of course, knight c3. Uh, knight e7 is also reasonable. I wonder if I should play bishop b4 and then knight e7. I wonder if that's a thing. Maybe. I think I will. This is maybe a rare chance that I can actually put my bishop out before my knight. Because normally in these structures, you play like knight e7, knight f5. But even if it's not the best move... It's a, it's a practical move. And, you know, queen b6 is practical. There's a lot of practical moves here. And it, I, I, I feel like uh, I got to play like what the people might play, you know? So knight e7. If I have to take, I will, but I can also reroute. And there you go. There's even more pressure on the center. So I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too stressed. In a perfect world, I play knight f5. I play queen b6 and everybody hits this. White castles, I castle, and d4 is under attack. Like, actually under attack now. Not a joke. So. Castles, I apologize. The most, uh... The most polite thing I've ever said, probably in a, in, a, in, a, in a recording for any video. A3. So, danger levels here, right? Uh, I don't have to take. I can play knight takes d4, which has been my plan for some time. And uh, now black is in uh, almost completely winning shape. Almost. Because, for example, queen d1 uh, loses immediately to bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight takes bishop. So I think opponent has to play this move. They have to defend their bishop, queen d3. And then if I take, you have to take with a pawn. Uh, and then maybe I take b5. So I'm just going to be a pawn up. But at a level probably above 22 2300 it it it's it's lost for white like it, it, you will lose probably 90% of the time and that's that's what happens uh, it's just you know it's the name, nature of the game bishop c3 of course i'm just going to play it very simply i'm going to try to get you all into a simplifying mindset okay here comes knight b5 i'm not even going to hesitate just don't hang this pawn and also don't damage your own structure uh, queen c8 is fine to go queen c6. Honestly, even like b6 should be fine. It's not a pretty move. Now my opponent should really try to trade off the weak pawn. The c pawn is horrible. Uh, that's not a bad move at all. We can try to play an end game if they take. They might just keep me pinned, which I also respect. Then I will play queen c7 probably to avoid the pin. I can also play queen e8 offering a trade. It's not a terrible move, but I decided to play h6 to just kind of play queens and rooks. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what my opponent is contemplating so intensely, but... There is absolutely no crime in thinking. Okay, so bishop h4 has been played. Uh, I am going to play queen c7, as previously discussed. Queen e7, and now we will be playing queens versus rooks. So, again, c4 really should be played. If you don't play c4, I'm going to play rook c8. You will never, ever, ever play c4. Because then I'm going to have full control. So that, that, that is like, if yeah. So queen b4 is actually also okay. If I take it, then you take with a C pawn. But now I'm stopping C4 and I'm hitting this. So, because this is the best move here, 100%. Because you have to prevent white from trading off the only weakness. Okay, and of course winning a second pawn is, is good.
And now we'll play rook c8. And of course, being up two pawns is better than being up one pawn. I don't know. Nobody can really, uh, nobody can really debate that. I think I'll just go back to f6. And now the easiest thing to do is just to trade queens and trade rooks. We play rook a c8. Uh, now, I wouldn't take here. What I would do is I would put the rook on c4. And the point is that if you get taken, your pawn will go. If you don't get taken, you will either double up or just start winning everything. So you have a very easy, uh, you have a very easy position here. Uh, take, take, rook c1, rook c8. And something like this. So b5, a5, c3, c2. You're going to win this by virtue of your pawns just going together. Now, admittedly, you shouldn't just get caught up with just moving pawns and only pawns. But I think in this case, you, you can. You can. You shouldn't push one at a time. You really should, like, make one hit the rook. You should be pushing the pawn with tempo. If you push the other one, it's probably also fine. Like, I can ignore this. Taking it is also fine. But I can ignore it. It's... Mm, wait, here, here could be annoying. Hmm. So take, take, b3. Can't trade rooks. Oh, this is easy. Yeah, I can take. See, my first instinct was wrong. I had to calculate. Now, don't... I wouldn't push c3. I think it's also fine. But you should hit the rook. And the trade doesn't work because the pawn slides through. So a king just can't stop two pawns. Especially if it's behind them. It can stop two pawns if it's in front of them. But that one is behind. But now we uh, get to our nice position. And um, king d4 will go b2. And if rook here will push and push. In that case we do have to uh, push two. Alternating. But you basically um, you push the one that uh, won't die. And uh, we are winning. B2 here, rook b1, doesn't really matter, rook b1 or rook there, we're going to push the c pawn, so rook b1, c2, c3, c2, and uh, we didn't even have to touch this side of the board, so just like this, king d3, c2, we'll make a queen, and if the opponent wants to play, we will demonstrate how to then win that endgame, but otherwise, yeah, this is just over, rook behind a pawn, especially pawns together, just fatal, not much to be done. I'll make a queen, I won't disrespect and make a rook or something. <clears throat> and my opponent is still going to play a little bit, but now they're getting forked. So they also could have gotten forked like that. They just resign. That was a good game. Uh, and yeah, opponent just didn't have a good weapon against c5, which... Just goes to show you, at 1460, you know, I didn't play anything insane. I just played all the normal moves of my opening. And, and Black was already doing very well on, like, move 8. You know, like here. Uh, here, of course, a3 is a blunder. But if something like this got played, maybe queen a5. Maybe knight f5. It's equal, but it seems like Black, in my opinion, has the easier game. That's what I would say. That's why I really like to recommend it. And everything else was straightforward. So, all right. Next person we are playing uh, is from Lithuania and also likes Bitcoin. I'm going to go D4. Let's go C4. Budapest Gambit. Wow. Okay. This is a very tricky system. So you, you have to take Knight G4, uh, Knight F3. Actually, here you just straight up have to know what you're doing. Uh, knight, yeah, Knight there. So here, Bishop F4 is, uh, is a good move. Uh... And against bishop b4, knight d2, you just basically have to not hang mate. Um, so, for example, here, queen e7, after a3, there's a tricky... And you play knight c3 also possible, but then, I, you know, you damage your structure, I don't really like that. Queen e7 is the move here. There's also f6, which is like an extra gambit, which I don't know anything about. 
So yeah, now now uh, you play a3 to get this bishop. And now you have to not hang mate. That's it. That's your only responsibility. Um, you can take on e5 first if you'd like. So something like knight takes. I think that's fine, right? I can take on e5. Plus I'm insane, but I think this is okay. Uh, knight e5 and then e3. Very important here to play this. So now there is no checkmate. And then queen d2 and like this. Um, and here, what black wants is to play a bunch of pawns on dark squares and put their bishop, and black is going to say, I am fine. Uh, white can play for a very quick c5, and I don't remember if it's here or where. Maybe bishop e2 castles castles, or bishop e2 and c5. But the point is that um, white sacks a pawn, and plays like super aggro. Queen d5, rook c1. I'm just gonna go here for now. So castles. And okay, actually, wow, b6 is played right away. So um, queen d5, maybe? The opponent plays it immediately. I'm very unhappy about this. Maybe I should have played c5. I'm just gonna play the normal stuff. And uh, I'm going to spend the rest of this game trying to make c5 work. That is, how, that is how you play it. Something like b4 and c5. Bishop is going to come here. Maybe black is going to play for f5. Maybe g5. There's all these different ways that black can create play. And my way of creating play will be to force this pawn here. And that's what we're doing. We spent a lot of the last game playing quietly. So... Uh, You know, for this game, we have to talk a lot more. So I'm thinking just rook c1. Also, rook fc1 is very interesting. Like, that could be completely fine. Queen c3 also could be okay. Something like this to, to then play c5. Uh, but you, you have to break with the pawns here because black's position is simply too solid. And, you know, th there's a chance black plays c5. But if black plays c5, then, then this becomes a lot weaker. That's a decent move. Black is trying to win my, my queen with knight to f3. And maybe trying to mate me as well. Evil, evil stuff. Wow, queen f6, queen g6. Maybe I take? I was going to go rook c1, but I really don't like this. Bishop g3 and maybe like h5. It's kind of scary. Maybe it's okay, but... Looks kind of terrifying. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. You want to checkmate me? You're going to have to prove it. You might, it might very well be a mate, and I might just be getting smashed by the Budapest Gambit. I, uh, I really like the Budapest. It's in the Black Gambit's course, which, like I told you in the intro, you could get for 40% off. Budapest Gambit is pretty sick. Because um, nobody's going to play it the way I play it. Okay, rookie 8 is a smart move. I could play bishop g3 preemptively. And maybe go for f4. That could be interesting. c5 is sort of like the move that... I, I need to accomplish this move if I have any hope of getting anything. So maybe I can take and even shut down my opponent or take and infiltrate. If I can get in with my queen, I can beat some stuff up over there. But queen g6 has to be played. I, I think. If it doesn't get played, then... So yeah, I, I was thinking to play bishop e5. This is, a, this is a very tough practical decision. In fact, we have a situation we had a couple of games ago when I played white, when I would not normally play the move c6, but in this case I will, because the rook, look at this, I can take and probably push, or I can just push. But this is so funny. This is so funny because now the bishop is going to, to jail. And at least when the rook was here, the bishop would come around. But uh, this, yeah, this is, this is very funny. Now c6 and um, bishop a8, and we're very happy. With the bishop on a8, I mean, the bishop is just not going to easily get back into the game, so. Smile. Yep, bishop to a8, and I can, I don't, I don't, do I want to trade queens? Maybe the rook comes out. I'll take. Whatever. 
Because my next move is b5. And once we cage in the bishop, it's going to be a very funny game where we have a bishop and black doesn't. Very, very funny situation. Super rare, too, you know? At least the bishop on h8 is usually the one getting trapped. But, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, that is... <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> so, and, uh, this kind of shows you the exact way you're supposed to counter uh, this uh, Budapest Gambit. Queenside expansion, uh, trade in the center. Uh, I now and and now we can trade everything. I mean, it really makes no difference. Like rook d1, we can trade all the rooks, and uh, the bishop on a8. It, it doesn't. I mean, it, it. We're just playing a full game up up a piece, basically. So everything being symmetrical, uh, and we will we will convert. Guess I'll give a check. Maybe king f8 will be played, and. Um, I think even for instructional value, I'll just trade off both rooks. Probably don't have to do that. I can even try to play like rook d7 and try to break out the pawn, and, but this is just pretty humorous. And in the long run, black will probably sack. So they will sack, get the two pawns, but if that's not even a bad move. I, I, I could win by taking probably, but I'm going to keep the cage. I, I, I don't want the bishop to move at all. I'm just going to keep a4, make sure the bishop never gets out. Um, and this would be a totally different position if the bishop could go the other way. So king e2, and um, I'm going to trade some rooks. Rook takes, and rook d1. And I told you, I'm just going to... Normally you want to keep some pieces on the board, but here we have no need for that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, material is equal, but peace quality is not. Uh, but I, I anticipate king d6 and then bishop c6. That's what I think is going to happen. Although I, I almost wish that doesn't happen, because then we can just play a full game where, <laughs> where the bishop never gets out. But, I, I mean, I think, I think black is going to be like, ah, I'm going to lose anyway, so I might as well try to break out. It's just a very human nature decision. Of course, if you just leave me with bishop versus pawns, I will take them all. King d4, and, uh, yeah. I don't know. H3. G4 to try to get e4. Maybe even bishop f7, bishop g6. The king is doing a decent job, but what's gonna happen is that black is gonna run out of moves. Like, in fact, I can probably show you in a very funny way how black will run out of moves. Like, I can play bishop b3, bishop a2, bishop b3, bishop c4, and the pawns will just die. They will just walk to their death. Run, run out of moves and then the king will walk back. It's going to be kind of a hilarious position. But. Yeah, so just bishop b3. Yeah, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically make black move all, all the pawns. <laughs> this is a very rare case you can do this where you just have a piece completely in prison. Uh, let's go bishop a2. <laughs> it's fun. Unique. Unique content. Uh, G3. If H4, maybe I take. I don't know. If F4, I'll take. If G4, I can push. So, anyway. You can skip ahead to the next game if you want. We're obviously going to win this one. This was just a pretty fun example, but uh, very rare to get something like this. I at some point, I would imagine, Mr. Ketokubas is going to take on C6. Yeah, there it is, and... It's happened, so now I'm going to do this, which I think is very important. I'm going to isolate my opponent's flank pawn on the same color square as my bishop. Like this. Uh, b5 will be played, of course, to try to create a pass pawn. I'm going to take with check. And uh, bishop f7, a4, bishop h5, a3, and I can always bring back my king. So we're going for the outside pawn because my, my flank pawn is there. Uh, and we have the benefit of this, but we also have bishop h5, and we can just come right back. But we'll just drop back to meet the king in the pawns, and the game is just simply over. <clears throat> Takes. And we roll. The king is also just way too far. c4, we're just taking. And that's it. 
Budapest Gambit is good, but being an international master is slightly better. And now you also know a nice, very solid variation to not get mated in eight moves. GG. That whole game played itself. Literally absolutely nothing to analyze there. Uh, with maybe the exception of... Uh, maybe the exception here of, of Queen G6. But my plan was to play like a combination of two moves. So something like if H5, you know, F3, and then E4, and, and, and get something like this, where this bishop is sort of out of the game and we're coming back around. So... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the game would have been a bit longer if that happened, but instead we put a bishop into, in, into prison. So, uh, here comes Lair and me. I don't know what, who Lair is, but uh, D4. I played a Karl Khan and I played E5, right? So, this game I will play uh, G6. Bishop G7. Okay, we have a London versus a Modern. So d6, I'm playing, uh, this is London, uh, this is, uh, London, potentially London course versus modern course. This is what I like to play. If you're gonna play a modern system, this is what I like to play against, uh, London. So knight d7 and push for a quick e5. And maybe even f5, like e5, f5 can sometimes be kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna apologize to my opponent. I said c6 was very mean. So here comes e5. This is, this is what London players really don't like. Uh, I could probably take with a knight as well, but I'm going to... I'll take with a pawn. Uh, they really don't like this, because now, now a London player is uh, totally out of their element. Uh, and uh, you, you don't give them anything. You don't give them the knight in the middle. You don't give them the center control. This is not a bad move, actually. Uh, I'm going to go knight e7. You can also block with the F-pawn, but I'm just going to try to get a little bit more development. And I didn't play knight F6. It's also fine, but I played knight E7. Um, and probably we will now both castle. I might go for a Fianchetto over here. B6, bishop, B7. To try to play on the diagonal. Knight C5, also a very useful move. And, of course, we always have e4. In fact, after castles e4, bishop e4, bishop b2, it looks like we're succeeding, but I'm not so sure. That's an interesting move to try to go knight d5. If castles knight d5, maybe f6. Yeah, we should be fine. Let's see, if, let's see how aggressive my opponent is feeling. Some people just, like, they, they're playing me, they want to get developed. Okay, so they're looking to finish their development. I really don't want to play f5 because I'm not taking care of my pin. And c6 kind of chops the movement of that knight. So I'm thinking f6, h6, c6. I really, I like c6, but I also want to do this. I don't know. Knight c5 is interesting. Knight c5 could be very interesting. It also could be good to play like one of these moves. And then knight c5. Ha. <sighs> um, I can play h6 and g5. Just push everybody out. The only reason I don't like this is that my queen is stuck guarding my knight, and uh, I'm a little bit cramped. I think I will go f6. I will go f6. I'm not too worried about check. Well, let's play knight c5, bishop c4, maybe even bishop e6. And this is just going to be a long game. This game, because we have, uh, we're going to have some trades now, it's all going to come down to the quality of the pieces. I can also play king h8, but I think for instructional value, uh, I'm going to show you how to play... Uh, a Ooh. But now I'm getting two bishops. So I can take the, the knight, uh, with the, the bishop with the knight, and I can actually get two bishops. But let me play, let me play this first. Because uh, I don't want to move my rook and lose my pawn. I'm playing a6 so that this rook can't really do too much. I mean, definitely some sort of like g5 should be good here for me uh, to just completely shut down this bishop. Right now, that, that bishop is totally out of the game. You had to trade light squared bishops there. You, you shouldn't have allowed me to get a bishop pair. Maybe rook d8 like this. So we have still pretty symmetrical structure overall, but at least we have knight for bishop and queen e2. Okay, plan is quite clear to me. 
Let's shut out this bishop from the game completely now. So we're not even letting it get back into the game at all. And I'm going to preemptively move to e8, because I understand that rook d1 is coming, or the other rook. So I can play queen g6 or queen c6, or, or just meet the rook on the d-file and trade pieces. Because again, this is going to be just like last game. If we can trade a bunch of pieces and leave the bishop g3 there, like looking like, ter like terribly, like how it does, you know, even h5, h4 is possible now. So for example, I will go here, and white just doesn't have enough space or targets. Yeah, h3 it makes sense, definitely. Uh, h4 is good, but even g4 is good, and knight f5 is pretty good, and maybe even pretty annoying. And then g4, knight d2, queen g6. Yeah, like, we can build a whole initiative here, so I can play knight f5. The bishop is going to come back even more. And then maybe even something like this, just, like, very simply, like, showing what I'm trying to do there. Of course, when you play like this, when you, when you play like the kind of chess, like, okay, we're going to seize the initiative now and we're going to go, 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 you run the risk of blundering. And we are overextending a little bit here for sure. Uh, I, I, I think every move that I've played so far has kind of tied together. Every move makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, that's a good move. That, that's a great move. My opponent should absolutely be doing that. And now what I want to do is I want to anticipate the counterplay with the knights. If I'm completely disregarding my position here, and the safety of my of my pieces, I might run into trouble. So I'm going to play knight h4. Uh, knight c5 is probably going to get played. And then I have a cool trick. I can play knight f3 check. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> but it looks cool. Oh, it does do something. Because king h1, maybe I have stuff on the h file. Hmm. I shouldn't discount my idea right away. But black is definitely overextending a little bit. I mean, there's, you know, knight c5 should be played. And then I have to think of something. Mm. Yeah, crazy. Some crazy attacking possibilities here. Always look for checks. Take, take is discover check and I win the queen. This is still the best move. And there's an argument to be made I should have played b6 to just stop that. But, of course, it comes with its own problems. So I'm just trying to play very aggressive. Kind of a same side attacking ideas here, mostly because of the, the poor bishop. Rook d2 must lose. First of all, rook d2 runs into knight f3, which is glorious, uh, which I'm going to play. Knight f3 is an amazing move. Uh, it looks like a total mirage, but it now is possible because knight d2 is even playable. Uh... Yeah, so king h1, and now we can take the rook. I'm looking to see if we have anything better, like taking here and going for something, but I think I'm just going to quickly pick the rook up and, and not really hesitate. Uh, knight f3 was only made possible because of rook to d2. If rook stayed on d1, I would have had to look for something slightly better. So, uh, yeah, I think um, rook d8 makes a lot of sense. Might as well bring the rook now. And the knight c5 is still a problem, I still should be careful, but it's slightly less of a problem, because now I, I also have some more material to back me up. I'm even thinking something completely insane like this. King f7, knight c5, rook h8. Looks a little bit suspicious. I, I, I don't know if I want to get involved with this. I might just play f5. Now, now knight c5 will be played with no question, because... Yeah. Duh. Now this is under attack. I was thinking to go bishop c8. It seems a bit sober, but it might be necessary. Now, of course, we're going to get checked. That's what you do when you need counterplay. You just try to check. And I was thinking to just trade queens. Just take my rook for knight position and trade the queens, like queen f7. I don't really see any move here for white. I mean, queen b4 is a bit ridiculous, but maybe... And if you don't trade with me, <laughs> whoever said the attack was done, right? I mean, we're going to push all the pawns. This bishop is really being pressed out of the game. But if we trade queens, then we'll just have to win an endgame. Wow. Okay, so... Okay. If I play a 4, then knight e4, yeah? b6, knight a6, bishop a6, some back rank problems, maybe. Um, b6 is definitely a good move. 
I, I, I want to trade. Even at the cost of a pawn, I want to trade some pieces. I can also... Oh my god, wait a minute. I have something even, even cooler. I can maybe just leave the knight there completely. Wow. 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 Wow, 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 wow. That is incredible. I can leave the knight and just play bishop b7 and attack the king. <laughs> the knight is trapped. Okay, knight d3 is... Fine. A5. A5. So now the pawn is not a weakness and we attack the queen. Not so easy to find a safe square. Actually, that's completely safe and I'm sort of an idiot, but then at least I can attack the queen again. I'm going to lose this pawn if I'm not careful. I can push it, but the whole point is to kill the bishop. I don't really don't want to kill the I don't want to allow that. So bishop d7, knight e5 is playable. Danger levels. If I take, 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 and queen d5. Uh, can I go here? I guess you just go back. Hmm. What was the position just now? My bishop was on c8, so we're not repeating moves if I play this. Uh, I mean, I want to trade, but I don't want to lose any pawns. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just don't want to lose any pawns. It's not you, it's me. Uh, but that was good counterplay here by my opponent. Yeah, I'm just going to go f4. And I'm going to lose a pawn, but right now my opponent is playing with no rook. So I'm going to lose one of my extra pawns, but I'm still happy, I think. But that, yeah, good counterplay by my opponent, like really being resilient. Maybe queen h5. I'm like really like not focused right now in terms of converting this position into an actual win. Actually quite bad. I'm gonna take. I can start like just making belligerent exchanges and not being worse. Uh, not risking making the counterplay any worse. Yeah, but this is definitely not very clean. Knight f4. Suddenly the bishop is gonna come alive. Man, I think maybe rook d2. Rook d2 to get in. I'm not, I'm not thrilled with what I'm doing here. Queen f5. Let's trade queens. It's insane. There's knight takes this, this, and bishop c7. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, that, that doesn't look like it's good because I get in. If I can get f2 and d2, d, d1, d2, it's probably just lost. It's all lost. It's just taking me some time and I'm falling asleep doing it, but it's all lost. Um, queen e2 uh, I mean bishop f7 is reasonable so is rook e8 I'm going to go rook e8 anticipating this also I have a threat discovered attack on the queen and obviously if we trade like this there's, there's still the problem of the king and the bishop over there so this is anything but good. Okay. I don't understand why you would do this. Are you going to go queen c4? Fair enough. This is under attack. I can't take... Can't take... Maybe c6? Yeah, let's go c6. Rook e1 is not a problem because we just guard. I mean, we have very good defense. And I will unpin myself in a moment. We basically... Need to make sure that even though the, bis the bishop can get activated, it's not actually going to attack anything weak in my position. 
or strong. Not attack anything weak or strong in my position, for that matter, so... <clears throat> e8, as planned. There's not much to be done. There is not much you can do. I will unpin myself and then I will go all the way down with my rogue. This was a tough game. This was a good game. Good resistance by my opponent. Uh, King h8. Now rook e1. King h7 probably also fine. That's better. My brain is fried as always. An hour into recording this stuff and talking. So. I go here and... Get a win. And queen f2 is coming. This is a funny move. I can play like g3 in some positions. Bishop can't take. Pawn can't take because we take the rook in some positions. In some positions. Not now. But in some positions. Queen f4. Yes. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Let's trade everything. <laughs> this is very funny. <laughs> I'm just going to trade absolutely everything. Doesn't matter. King g7 makes no difference to me. Actually, very instructive. Outside passer. So uh, I can sack a4, take, take king e1, a3, king d1, a2, take, take a4, take, take king e1, a3, king d1, a2. Boom. And the game is over. Outside pass pawn. Very nice. And we just make it all the way down. It's very important to identify in which structures you can actually make an outside pass pawn. I'm going to make a rook. And then I'm going to take on g2. Of course, you also, oh, a very good moment there to lose the game. Rook g2, e7. So this allows me to bring my king. Now we take everything. And uh, I'll make a queen to end things off. Okay. GG. That was a good one. That was a fun game, and that's a nice way to attack the London system if you're going to play g6. Uh, e5 is quite decent. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, already here, black is actually playing for the advantage. Like, knight c5, bishop e6. Uh, and, uh, yeah, bishop b3 was no good. Of course, you have to go here. But still, because this bishop is so out of the way, this London bishop... Um, it doesn't get into this game at all, and black is doing very well. Uh, so, last game. Last game. I mean, that was... I guess I'll play e4. French. So, against this, uh, let's play knight f3. And I'm gonna play e5 and the wing gambit. This isn't my gambit repertoire. Playing like this. <laughs> Opponent just blitzes it. Wow, an a3. So this is uh, the wing gambit. And you don't even have to take back right away. You can just take the center. Uh, and, and the point is that, again, this is the third time in this video we've had d4, e5. Alekhine, uh, Karl Khan. But in this case, white supports everything. And I'm going to put my bishop on d3, take back at some point. I, the pawn, you know, is going to get taken back. Uh, bishop d3, there's probably knight b4, so I probably should play c3. I think. That makes sense. I'm going to go here and castle. Uh, and we have a really solid structure. So what a lot of people do here is they break with f6 because they know that if they don't, they might get completely suffocated further down the line. Okay, a2 is a very annoying move. <laughs> you actually make me take your pawn. That's just being stubborn more than anything. Uh, and now, now we obviously put our bishop on d3 uh, so that it cannot get hit with knight b4. And now what I like to do here is I actually like to play h4. Uh, in some in some versions. So for example, uh, sometimes you can castle, and that's what I'm going to do right now. And and black will play knight g6, just kind of lazy offhand knight g6, uh, because now you can't really play f6. f6 is much better if your knight can take. It's not very good if white shreds open the center on you. So black is up a pawn, but severely lacking in space. This del this wing gambit against the French and Sicilian positions is is very nasty. Uh, and gambit's repertoire for white know what it is um and 
Yeah, knight g6, I'm, I'm thinking to just play h4. Not, not right away, but like, that's my plan. h4, h5. It's a little bit stronger when the rook is uh, still on h1, but playing like this is, is kind of normal here. I'm playing for h4, h5. Very standard anytime you have a knight on that square. So those four squares. Attacking the knight with the flank pawn, with the h pawn or the a pawn, it's kind of a very typical idea. Um, probably this is the best move right now. You know what I should have probably done is played queen c2. So that this move is not as powerful. Yeah, and it's played good, good for my opponent. So I can take... I don't think I want to do that. I think instead I'm going to play either rookie 1 or rookie 2. I don't know which one I want to do. Rookie 1 or rookie 2? I think I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to bring my a rook, which my opponent allowed me to take with the pawn over here on a2. And, uh, and uh, kind of get this position. Although I can also throw in the capture on g6. Yeah, so right now I have to be a bit precise. I have to probably take on g6. Take, take, 95, 95, rookie 5, and I don't know, wild position. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play like this. This pawn is gonna restrict my opponent's movement, so nothing is, nothing is happening here. Yeah, bishop c5 makes a lot of sense. h4, knight g5, etc. Maybe bishop g5. Yeah, maybe. Hold on. Bishop g5 actually makes sense. So does bishop e3. h4, castles, h5, rook f3 is a very funny thing. Uh, I can also take now and then play queen d3. That looks not so stupid, I must say. Taking. I'm playing queen d3. Uh, yeah, I mean, black has knight e7, which is depressing. And then I will probably pin the knight. So this is a, this is a potentially very violent position that's about to develop. I will pin the knight. Of course, uh, if I just win the pawn, it's not that great. Is there a castle short? <gasps> Did I blunder short castle here? Oh, and the check is not so strong. Uh-oh. Oh, it's not even check at all. Oh, wow. I don't know if I blundered. Or, like, I, I don't know if it's that bad. If blunder might be too strong of a word. But castles just gets the king out of safety. I, I mean, out of danger. Out of safety. Uh... Yeah, of course, 97 is fine. But now that I know that short castles is still there, I'm very tentative. But I'm still going to play bishop g5. I mean, you need to continue the initiative, right? So I need to pin the knight. Uh, and maybe knight d2, knight b3, knight d4. Of course, in the French, the light square bishop is black's major problem. So black really struggles to get this bishop in the game. But there is a6, and... Um... <laughs> How do I deal with that? I was thinking to just play knight to d4, but there's takes, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe have to sacrifice some material. This is not this is not ideal. I, I always take my my eye off the ball in the last game, and I sometimes get myself into a very bad position, like allowing way too much play in this game. But it's okay. I mean, it's still a lesson into in in how to deal with a bad position. But it just goes to show you that. I do have to focus. I do have to focus. Okay, queen b6 also threatens bishop b5. Uh, I can take on e7. I can also play knight d4, but bishop b5 is always there. I'm going to take the knight. And I'm going to take g6. And, um... Of course, if bishop b5 just takes. So right now I have, I have the upper hand in terms of the initiative. I have the far superior threat. But bishop b5 is a, is a pain. It's an annoying move for sure. Uh, I might need to even play like c4. I might have to sack, but I really don't want to. And this is actually pretty legitimate counterplay on my king. Mm. It would be really nice to have a bishop, and I don't. Because the bishop can... 
Fight on the diagonals. Okay, so that move, queen g7, rook f7, queen g5. Yeah, I should do that. I mean, it's a free pawn with check. And now I have to come back because otherwise my knight is hanging. Now we have to play some moves. So my knight is hanging, right? I have this with the idea to play knight g5. That's actually very, very good. That's actually very good. So I guard my knight. In fact, maybe queen g6 was even better. But queen h5 is very annoying because if the king continues to try to unpin itself, I have check and then the back rank and then I can try to win this rook. But right now I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking here or knight g5. Knight g5 straight away, rook g7, queen h6. Maybe this is better. So let's check the king to send it to the back rank and then play knight g5. So right now we're winning this dance, right? That's what we're doing. But knight g5, there is bishop to e7, but then I have check here, check back, king to... Wow, what is going on? Mm. Knight g5, bishop e7 is ridiculous. I'm still doing well, but... This lurking threat of bishop b5 is absurd. I have to move... Oh, wait, there is no threat! Not quite. It's not as bad as I described, because whenever there's bishop b5, I can go rook b2, and I can pin the bishop. Ah, wait. Maybe this is not so bad. I was thinking to play some c4 move, so I could sack the pawn and then play knight c3. But I'm going to go knight g5. So opponent has to find this move. Maybe they will. It's a tough move. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but it's so hard to back up. They find it. And now this there is takes. And so I was thinking to just take on g5. Then bishop b5. But then rook b2. Then queen c5. And then I just move my rook. Yeah, I should be good there. So takes. The good thing about this is that that bishop is a very good piece for black. And black still cannot castle. So since black can't castle, black's king is always a, a liability. And this, yeah, so... I really wanted to play c4, but actually rook b2 is good, I think. And then I have, then I have a lot of tactics. So for example, here I can play rook b2. So I, I, I realize that I can do this. I can, I can pin the uh, bishop to the queen. So good, good tactical vision. I mean, left, right, diagonal. Th this is a very geometric tactical fight. Very high level fight here. I mean, just seeing how the board works. Um, you know, if I back up there and I lose my rook... Black just starts pushing, so I don't think queen c6 is that scary. I'm even thinking to sack the pawn now. But I, I just, I don't want to give my opponent any play. That's the problem. I just have to be careful. I'm just going to play rook e1. Maybe rook c1 was smarter. Yeah, because right now, I mean, black can just, just throw caution to the wind and play a5, a4, a3 and just try to survive. Uh, and they can, because I have no, you know, I don't have anything. Of oh, wait a minute. Could I have taken on b5? Am I stupid? Oh, I'm so, I should have rook b5. I mean, I could have played this and check. And... Can't move the king up, because I take the rook, and rook f8, maybe queen e6. Ah, man, maybe rook b5 was just winning. Whoopsies. Uh, that's bad. And, yeah, uh-oh. This is actually very bad. Because now the rook is... Ah, man, I messed up. Maybe I have some... A way to get back some initiative here. I really don't want to sack my pawn, though. I'm pretty rattled by that mistake. Maybe c4, bishop c4, and now I go for this pin and try to create some play. b5, knight d2, one of the lines opens up. I mean, it's a crazy position. I mean, yeah, and the rook is coming. I, I, ha I mean, this. I have to be fast here. Okay, let's go queen back to e3, maybe. I don't think that's the last mistake I'm going to make in this game. So I'm playing queen e3 so that if the rook moves, I have actually can take on a7. And that would be really nice because then I would be up two pawns. 
and I would just need to deal with a bit of counterplay. And a queen trade at that point would lead to just a totally winning endgame. Yeah, so now, now is this just... Can I, can I play this? This is so bold. I mean, I could just lose the game. I have no clue. The other thing is this ties this queen down, so there's no queen c4 business, because queen d7, rook h7, maybe I just play like f4 or something, and, and I defend everything. I'm going to have to push my pawn. And probably black will sack something. Black will probably sacrifice like a bishop or a rook to open up my king. Uh, but taking on a7 is huge, I think, because now it's very hard to protect the remainder of the pieces w without weakening anything else. Or like, if you're going to get aggressive here with black, it might not be so simple. Knight a3 is coming. Even c4. c4 now is possible because bishop c4, rook b7, and queen c4, knight a3, etc. So I'm... and queen b7. So I'm really threatening some very nasty uh, stuff just by winning the a7 pawn and getting all the way back there. Like, this is a very natural move here, but I'm not sure it accomplishes much. You're gonna have to, like, sack something. Which still looks scary. Um... King e7 should lose. So first of all, I have, I have probably just this check, which is just, I think, a good move. I think king e7 is a bit slow. I don't know what my opponent was trying to do there. c4. You know what I could do? Like I said earlier, I can go for an endgame. Something like this. I can, uh, I, can, I can try to force an endgame. With no queens on, I will never get mated. With... No mate, I will never lose. Wise words. I also could have played queen d6. Take, take, and b5 is under attack. But I decided to do it like this. Queen b4 and infiltrating over here. If my knight could be there on one of those dark scores, that would be nice. But the knight is slow. It takes the knight a long time to get into the game, so... Yeah, I was very nervous when I missed king d7. Uh, I should have been more precise, but queen b6. Yeah, and with, with a queen trade, the rooks can't break through a, so a solid structure. The queen can, the rooks can't. And if you play queen c4, queen a4, I have this. And if I get in there, you're going to lose everything. So, But maybe still queen c4 and... Just try, you know, try your best. Probably not, though. But I, I, from a practical standpoint, you should play queen c4. <clears throat> okay, well, that's going to probably... I don't know about this. Rook b6. Don't have an auto win, though. I, I don't have just the immediately winning idea, which is kind of sad. I really want to play c4. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do it. Uh, if queen c4, there is this or that. If bishop c4, yeah. So I, against this move, I was thinking to just win some tempi. Maybe it's not even good. <laughs> I uh, got a little bit too excited to sack a pawn. Maybe knight a3. Knight a3 should be good. Knight a3, knight b5. Let's do it. I want to just take the bishop. That's not a bad move, actually. Okay, knight b5. Am I blundering mate? I don't think so. I have some nasty ideas. Not right now, but whoa. That's actually pretty scary. Rook takes h2. Oh my god. That is like no joke. <laughs> and it's like mate almost. I have to like defend here. Oh my god. Okay. Luckily I saved myself some time. Uh, Queen b4 threatens knight d6. This was my entire idea. So queen b4, rook h2, knight d6... 
King d7, and I can probably take the bishop, first of all. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. I also think that's what my opponent's going to do. I think my opponent's going to see this and get really excited to mate me, but not realize that I don't have to win the queen or the rook. I can win the bishop. Very funny. This is a very annoying move, which is why I activated my knight this way, because in the future I was looking to clear it out. Uh, and of course, if king f8 or something, I take the queen with check. Which is just winning. It's never too late to hang mate, though. Never too late. So, I mean, I think the opponent will either resign or just play rook h2. Yeah, there it is. Check. You have to do this. Ah, that's also not a bad move. Uh, but I think I can take... And if here this is mate, if here that probably leads to mate... Yeah, so I can just play check. And I can win the rook, and I'm not getting mated myself. Which is good. Not getting mated is a good thing. Yeah, so queen h8 is, a, is actually still a mate threat. But I, unfortunately, I'm just going to take the bishop and go here. And uh, yeah, I, I, they run out of pieces. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed. Pretty long episode, hour and a half. But uh, if you made it this far, appreciate you very much. Um, you can tell me if you have any holiday plans. There you go. That's going to be your hidden message. So I'll see in the comment section who actually watched this far. 40% off all courses, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.